Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're gonna to be working on the tow rig. So if you watched uh, my last video, maybe, I don't know what order they're gonna come out in, but uh, I towed with the tow rig to Club Loose, which is in New Jersey uh, last weekend. And uh, right before I left, I found out one of my airbags was blown. So I had to tow my trailer with no airbags and uh, really made me realize how terrible my suspension was. So we're gonna be working on the suspension and the Titan today. So let me show you what I got going on. All right, so first thing we got here is, uh, I got some new airbags. So uh, these are airlift airbags. I did get two new ones. Uh, the other one's not busted, but uh, you know, I figured I'd replace them both and then I'll have a backup. Next thing we got is new shocks for the whole truck. So we got Bilstein 5100 fronts, Bilstein 5100 rears, and these are some springs I've had for a while. Um, they are from a Pro 4X for the front end. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and get those put on. And uh, hopefully after that, the truck's gonna ride a lot better. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get the front end uh, picked up first. And uh, we're gonna try to get these uh, struts, these new struts mounted. And uh, we'll talk about what I have already as far as lift and what we're gonna do for lift and uh, you know see where we end up. All right, so first thing we do, get the truck jacked off. Jack, <laughs> jacked off, jacked up. Get the giant wheel off, very heavy. <clears throat> so obviously, this is what we're removing. We're gonna take this bolt out. We're gonna take these three bolts out of the top. I'm gonna get this guy pulled out and then I'll show you uh, what I got going on for lift right now. All right, so I got it out. And uh, as you guys can see, I have this extra piece at the top here. This is from uh, Rough Country. It's just a spacer that goes in the top of the coil bucket thing there. And uh, it supposedly gives me two inches of lift. So I didn't measure this beforehand. Well, before I put that on. So I don't know if it actually gets me two inches of this. I have no idea. But um, yeah, so with the new uh struts in the front so these struts are adjustable you can move this ring right here to these three different spots this lowest one is supposed to be stock ride height this middle one is supposed to be one inch of lift this top one's supposed to be two inches of lift so also i was told that these pro 4x springs give you about an inch of lift too how all that's gonna play out, I don't really know. I did measure this before, um, and we'll compare afterwards what we got for lift. But um, what I think I'm gonna go with, so I'm trying to get a little bit more lift out of the front, um, but what you have to worry about <clears throat> is coil bucket contact. So you can see right now, at full droop, this upper control arm is laying on this coil bucket. So if you try to go too high, when you're riding out on your suspension, it'll hit right there. So we gotta be careful with that. But uh, what I'm thinking about is putting that block back in the top of my new strut and raising it up to the one inch or the middle setting here, putting the Pro 4X spring in and we'll see what we end up with. Um, if it's too high, we'll have to come back and pop this down to a one. But we're gonna go with that and uh, see how it goes. So. Uh, yeah, next thing we got to do is uh, I'm going to take that top hat off and then we're going to take this coil spring out of here because we need to reuse the top hat off of this strut. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done and I'll show you guys how I'm going to do that with one of my favorite tools, what I call the Widowmaker. Let's get to it. All right, so these are what I call the Widowmakers. So basically what you do is you put these on this spring like this and you use that their impact to compress this spring so you can get this top hat off. Also, we'll need to compress the new spring to get it on the new coil. 
So, the reason I call them Widowmakers, and I'm sh pretty sure I got that from somebody else, so I'm assuming a lot of people call them that, is because when you crank that spring down, this thing essentially becomes a giant spring bomb. Um, there's a ton of force. Um, if we were compressing a smaller spring, like off my 350, I wouldn't be as concerned. But these are mega truck springs, and they're very taut. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that. And let's let's uh, you know see how it goes. So here's a quick comparison of the springs. The old one's obviously the shorter one. Pro4X one is basically one coil longer, three quarters of a coil longer. Um, I'm conflicted on whether this is actually going to give me ride height or just make my front end stiffer. I'm not real sure, but we're going to go with it. Um, I mean, if it doesn't feel great, we can obviously put the old ones back on. So, uh, I also did go ahead and click this up to the second click here. And um, I mean, hopefully the combination of all these products doesn't make it too high, but um, we're gonna find out shortly. All right, so here is the final assembled shock. Well, I guess minus my uh, thing that needs to go back on here. But uh, yeah, uh, first time I put the spring on, First time I put the spring on, I put it on backwards, I'm assuming. Um, this top plate was very crooked. And uh, I realized that these two springs at the top of one side are very close together. And those are not so close together. Uh, I'm assuming the not close together side goes towards the bottom. Because, like I said, when it was the other way, that plate was super crooked. Uh, it's still a tiny bit crooked, but that I'm okay with. Because it'll probably settle out after it bounces around a little bit in my truck. Um, this spring is much more compacted than this one would be. Obviously, you can see it's, I mean, it's tight. So, I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. If it makes the truck feel too stiff, like I said, we'll just put the old ones back in. But I got them. We might as well give them a shot. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this one thrown back in the truck, get the other side off, get it strapped up, and then we'll drop it down and see what it looks like. All right. So, I got the driver's side front done and um, some interesting findings. So I actually just took it on a quick test drive uh, because I was pretty shocked. Um, but so from the ground to the top of the bottom of my fender, before I put the new shocks on was 36 and a half. It's now about 38. Not too surprising since I raised those things up, except that piece is not in there. Uh, front suspension is pretty much done. Uh, again, to remind you what we went with was uh, Bilstein 5100s on the middle setting for height adjustment and the Pro 4X springs, which were a little bit longer than my stock springs, in the front. Um, I took out the rough country spacers, which were supposed to give me two inches of lift. Um, I don't know how much that actually was. I don't, I don't know if I remember, uh, measured, but, um, so the front is two inches higher now with the rough country spacers removed. So, uh, they're at 38 and a half now to my fender. They were at 36 and a half when we started. So front suspension is pretty much done. Uh, rear suspension. I got the shocks on the back. Um, one of the bolts I ended up having to cut, uh, the other ones weren't too bad. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the only, I just pushed the shock with my hand to get it inside the mount. So the only uh, thing left is the airbags. So I'm going to go ahead and take mine off right now. And then I'll basically go over reinstalling them with you just to give you an idea how they work. Whew, I had to put sunglasses on, man. It's, oh, it's so bright. Um, so here's the old bag. Um, 
what I think happened is this was rubbing on the frame. So that's not Airlift's fault. These bags are great. They're amazing. It's my fault. Uh, there's a minimum pressure you're supposed to run in them. It's 10 or 20 pounds. And mine would go flat all the time because uh, one of them was leaking somewhere. So uh, I think it could have even been one of the airlines that I installed. So, <laughs> But anyway, we got some new bags here. And um, they're pretty simple. Basically, one bracket goes on the bottom like this. But this big guy in it goes through there. Boop. This bracket goes on top here with a new plastic nut and washer that goes in here. Um, neither one of these fittings have to be super tight because they are going into plastic. So don't crank your butt off on them, but you know, make sure they're good and snug. Um, if there's a torque spec in the airlift book, obviously follow that. Um, and then the only other thing we gotta do is put the fittings in. I don't know what kind of fittings the airlift kit comes with now. These are push locks, so they're basically just one thread's in here. They're already pre-taped. I have to replace one of the pieces of hose because I burnt it when I was uh, trying to get a bolt out for one of my shocks. And um, yeah, so anyway, I'm gonna get that assembled and then I'll show you where it goes. It's real easy and they work great. To get these bags installed is super easy. So right here, I got it sitting where it needs to go. So I have my axle supported on two jack stands, right? And then I'm jacking the back of my truck up by the hitch, or you can do your bar or your cage or your spare tire, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Jack the back of your truck up. Not so much that it comes off the jack stands because you want that. And uh, this bag will basically fit right in here. So you can see my holes are gonna line up right where they were. Now, one of these holes gets a bolt straight through it. The other three get self tapper. Uh, thick boys. So go ahead and get those put in. Um, like I said, I believe this one lines up already and they tell you how to measure to do these other ones. And then uh, over this bottom part here, you get this uh, shackle looking kind of thing and uh, the associated hardware that goes on the bottom. That's literally it. It's super easy. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that done. And then um, the only other thing under here is the airlines. So one of these airlines I damaged uh, cause you can see one of the bolts for the shocks is right here and I had to heat it up and I melted a little section of this line. So I'm going to run two new lines, uh, back to the back. And, uh, I only have them running off one port right now. I'm going to switch that back to two. So each bag has its own fill side. And, um, basically my reasoning behind that is if I get a hole in one again, at least I have the other one survives because only one of these bags is bad. So I will have a spare now. So get all that put on. I have my fill things right here in my bumper. So one of these is new, one of them's old. I'm gonna replace that one. And, oh God, son. When I get all that done, I'll, uh, we're gonna put like 20 pounds in them and then drop the truck and check for leaks. So I got both the bags on both sides installed. They have about 50 pounds in them right now so we can test them for air leaks and, um, yeah, usually I run about 70 pounds when I tow the trailer. I think the max they can take is 100, and I believe the minimum they want you to keep in it is 20 pounds. So got those filled up. The only other thing I did was I put this sleeving on this side. Um, this is just some plastic loom I had. It just makes me feel a little better that the line's protected. I separated them on the back. So now we have left and right fill. And basically I'm just going to check them for air leaks now. So... All we're going to do with that is there's only two joints. It's only here and at the other side where the air hose connects. The bags are brand new, so I don't have to worry about them. Um, but basically, I got some soapy water here, and we're just going to spray this on and just look for bubbles coming out. That's about it. So, yeah, pretty easy. Go ahead and do that for all your spots where they're coming together, and, uh, and you should be good to go. All right, so airbags installed. Here is them with 20 pounds in them basically what my ride height was before which is about eight and three quarters from the fender to the ground pretty much same thing on the other side i'm gonna go ahead and fill them up to uh, like 80 pounds and show you what that looks like all right so here's what they look like with 75 pounds and again i'm pretty sure the max is 100 i don't know if you actually want to do that but there's 75 pounds so now my height from the where's my hand from the ground to the bottom of the fender is like 40 and a half it's almost two inches higher. So you get about two, two and a half inches probably of lift from these bags. 
Um, I obviously don't use them for lift. I use them for towing. So I found that towing my trailer, I need to put about, uh, what did I say, like 70 pounds in them to make it level ride for my truck. So that's what I do. I also use a weight distribution hitch. And um, yeah, so that's what I do. Works out good for me. It makes the ride really comfortable. Makes the trailer very controllable. My truck likes it. So uh, you might have to experiment with yours and your setup, but otherwise, great product. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all set up now to cruise around and I'm gonna knock this pressure down and I'm gonna check it again tomorrow to make sure that they're not leaking air for sure. Check it the next couple days. So uh, yeah, that's my video on Titan suspension install. If you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. Uh, if this video helped you out, like it, please. And um, I'll see you next time.